everyone. It's great to see you. I am so excited because today the garden fountain was delivered. I don't think I've even shared with you the fact that I ordered a garden fountain, but as you know, we've been redoing our side garden here. And way back at the beginning of the process, Dan and I decided that we thought a water fountain would look really good in the garden. And boy, I did all the hunting online and looking at all the different options. It's been quite the process. And here you can see coming down the street on a pallet is the water fountain. So the fountain was delivered on a large truck that couldn't fit down our street. So a very nice delivery man wheeled it with a, a push forklift, something like that, down our street and into the driveway. And that's when I really realized that, my gosh, this is really heavy. And this is going to be quite a project to get it into the garden. And Dan had been telling me it was going to be extremely heavy. But wow, uh, I didn't realize how heavy it was till it got here. So let me tell you a little bit about the process that I went through ordering this, because I'm sure if you've ordered something for your garden that you plan to have there for a while, you know how much thought goes into this. So I don't want to sound like um, an advertisement. I'm not sponsored by anyone. I just had a lot of great help choosing out this fountain. And I, I'm so pleased with how it worked. I want to share that with you. I ended up ordering the fountain from Amazon and it was fulfilled by Pottery Land. They did an awesome job and it was back ordered. It took six to eight weeks to get here. They were on the phone talking to me, updating me with how things were going, making sure that, you know, I was okay with that. It was really nice to know that they were on my side. The fountain is actually made by Campania International, and they do a lot of cast stone work. So there's natural stone, which is like carved from a big block of stone, and there's cast stone, which is like fancy concrete, which is a conglomerate of lots of different types of stone that is often poured into a mold, and that's what this is. They actually create it in a couple pieces. So this is the hydrangea bird bath fountain. So you can see the bottom part is like a bird bath, and then there's this insert that sits on top. This particular one has etched in it hydrangea leaves, one of the reasons I love it so much, and it bubbles water up through the top, and that circulates. So I was looking for something with really simple lines, nothing too big or too overwhelming. And when I saw this, not only does it have those nice sort of modern clean lines, but it also has the hydrangea leaves that are set in the top here. And it just, I love hydrangeas. It seemed like that perfect touch to have in a garden that's going to be full of actual hydrangea bushes. So when I was making this decision, Campania offers a bunch of different patinas, stains that they can put on the stonework when it's shipped to you. So first they pour it. These are some of the choices that I had to choose from. I ended up just going with the natural look and didn't have an additional stain put on. But as you know, that is a tough decision when you are deciding something like this. I also ended up ordering a cover for the fountain because with all these fountains in zone 6B, you have to make sure that you drain the water really well and then cover it for the winter. And this cover is supposed to let the water evaporate if it did get any water underneath, but it keeps any additional water from getting in and sitting there over the winter and then potentially freezing and cracking the stonework. So as this big pallet sat in the front, um, and we weren't quite sure what we were going to do. We were so fortunate that Mike, our sprinkler guy, so he runs Galaxy Sprinklers, and takes care of our irrigation system. He had run the water line out to where the fountain was going to be. He happened to call to say that he was ready to drain and turn off our irrigation for the winter, and he was willing to help unpack and move the big heavy fountain. So shout out to Mike for your help because we really needed it and that worked out so well. We decided that we would unpack the fountain, put it in the garden so I could take some pictures and see how it was going to look, and that we would actually store it in the shed for the winter before we hook it up.
So here's the fountain about where it's going to end up next spring. And I was just so pleased to see it there in the side. It looks like it's going to fit in really well. And I can just picture all those hydrangea bushes blooming all around it. I think it's going to be a good fit here. And you can see how on top, there's the hydrangea leaves that just add that little bit of detail. I think that it's going to be gorgeous. So I took my pictures. Well, Dan took pictures. And now I can look at them through the winter and think of that. And then we moved it into the shed here. And I say we. I didn't personally move it. So thank you to everybody who helped. Now the big part of the fountain is stored in the shed. And that little insert on top with the pretty hydrangea leaves actually is inside the house for the winter. And next spring, I get the joy of moving this out and getting it hooked up and working. Thank you so much for listening to my journey here with the fountain. I would love to see some pictures of fountains that you have in your garden or hear about any experiences or advice you have for keeping a water fountain functioning and happy in your garden. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.